How's it going, everybody? Hope you're all doing well. I am in my unheated, chilly little workspace gearing up to do another review. Today I'm looking at the Viper Spectra KS5000, which is their new 4x4 bar light. Viper Spectra has four different series in their lineup right now. I've tried the XS series, which I thought were fantastic little lights. I have one of the P series. Most of what they offer right now are sort of different variations on the same thing though. They're all fairly small little board lights, little rectangles meant to cover something like a two by two or some of the longer ones will do like a two by four, but they don't really have anything that's meant for a bigger space. A lot of lighting companies are putting out these bar style lights right now. So I think this is a good step that Viper's taking to stay competitive and sort of stay up to speed with the rest of the market. Okay, let's check this thing out. This is the driver. We've got some gigantic Viper Spectra stickers, always growing. Manual. And the light itself. So it looks like all the bars come pre-attached to the frame, which is nice. It means there's no assembly that I have to do. It should be pretty much ready right out of the box. Which way does this open? Like that. see a couple wires that pop out of the frame here. Two connectors, I guess one probably feeds three of the strips and the other feeds the other three. Looks nice. It's very clean and polished and light, which is a bonus. It doesn't put a whole bunch of stress on your tent poles because some of these things are heavy depending on what the manufacturer uses for the frame, but this is nice and light. It's got little eye hooks here for your ratcheting rope hangers. And that's pretty much all you're gonna have to do is attach your hangers to those clips. Holy cow, that is a gigantic driver. Look at the size of this thing. I don't know if you can see that. Oh yeah. Isn't that massive? That's bigger, quite a bit bigger than my, my Meanwell 600 watt driver that I have downstairs. And this thing is rated for 500 watts of output power. I struggled to get it out of the box. That's a pretty nice looking unit and it's heavy too. You know, some of these power supplies are really big on these lights, but they're light, you know, like there's nothing going on inside, but this is, a substantial unit. So this side we got the two power connectors that will hook up to those ones coming out of the light obviously. There's a dimmer on here and then it looks like there's a couple little ports here for daisy chaining dimming between multiple lights so you can control them all from just one uh, one dimmer and the power plug. Got a little baggie here. This guy's got a uh, cable for daisy chaining dimming between multiple drivers and it's got another type of plug for the AC input side and then here we have ratcheting rope hangers which is great to have included so we don't have to buy them separately and one of these little carabiner assemblies I think in the case of the 5000, which I have, this is meant to maybe to hang the driver. I saw that in the manual where you can you can hang the driver like this vertically from like the top of your tent or something if you wanted to run it in your tent. But since I only have one of these, I'm guessing that must be the case. 
wouldn't be for the light. I think that's it. All right, let's try this thing out. I have my cables hooked up here. Plug my driver in. And the dimmer is set to off right now. So the settings are 25%, 50, 75, and 100%. And then there's also an EXT setting. EXT would be for if this is daisy chained with another driver and this one was one of the slave drivers. The master would get set and then all the slave drivers would get set to EXT. So let's go. Oh yeah, that is bright. Is that the first setting or the last setting? That's the first setting, so it's only gonna get brighter. Yeah, that's pretty crazy bright. I have my eyes completely closed because I don't have my sunglasses like a dummy, but that is super bright. So what can I tell you about this light? Each of these six bars has 204 Samsung white diodes that are a mixture of 3000K and 5000K color temperature. And these are LM301H diodes, which Samsung produces specifically for horticulture applications. These 301H versions are rated at a PPE or photosynthetic photon efficacy of 3.1 micromoles per joule, whereas the ever popular LM301B chip from Samsung that Viper's main competitors tend to use comes in a little lower at 2.92 micromoles per joule. To put it simply, between these two models of diodes, the 301H produces more photons that are useful to plants with the same amount of power applied to it, and the KS5000 uses these H versions of the chips. There are six Osram 660 nanometer red diodes on each bar to round out the spectrum so the light can be used for veg or flowering. The surface of these strips is coated to make the diodes more water resistant. Viper Spectra just got the sphere test results back for this light today, and it looks like it came in at a PPE of 2.56 micromoles per joule. And this number accounts for everything. It's the efficiency of the diodes, the efficiency of the driver. Overall, the fixture has a PPE of 2.56. The driver is a Sosin unit that's rated for an actual power draw of 500 watts, plus or minus 3%. As mentioned earlier, the driver supports manual dimming and daisy chaining to other lights to dim from a single point, but the manual tells me that the little six pin jacks on the driver also allow for external control of the driver via PWM, so there are some automation opportunities there. The KS5000 footprint covers a 4x4 nicely, and it's considerably larger than its competitors. The Mars Hydro FC4800 is 32 by 33 inches, the Spider Farmer SC5000 is about 34 by 34, and the KS5000 is about 39.5 by 39.5 inches, so it's over 15% larger, which helps get light out to the corners and edges of your space. The bars are not mounted equidistant and are instead spread out toward the edge of the frame, leaving a larger gap in the middle to prevent center hotspots. You'll notice the diodes themselves are also more concentrated on the ends of the bars for the same reason. There's no easy way to attach the driver to the frame, so you have two options with this light. You can hang the driver in the tent with the included carabiner kit, or you can just run it outside of the tent completely. I was curious how much heat the driver was contributing inside the tent, so I ran a little experiment, which admittedly isn't all that scientific, but hey, it's something. I ran the light at full power with the driver inside the tent, with an exhaust fan running at the lowest setting, just sort of gently cycling air in the space, for about four hours. You can see on this jaggy little graph that the air temperature stabilized inside the tent at about 1.15 p.m. and fluctuated from there between 25.7 and 25.9 degrees Celsius, or 78.3 to 78.8 Fahrenheit. This dip you see is when I opened the tent, grabbed the driver, and placed it outside of the tent and sealed it back up. The temperature stabilized again shortly thereafter, and then floated between 25.5 and 25.7 degrees Celsius, or 77.9 and 78.3 Fahrenheit. I was surprised because I thought there would be a more pronounced difference, but it only ended up being about 0.2 of a degree Celsius. Let's talk about PPFD now, or photosynthetic photon flux density, which is a measurement of how many photosynthetically active photons from the light hit a square meter per second. Aside from sphere measurements, PPFD measurements are one of the best ways to compare the output of lights against one another. I set the KS5000 up in my automated PPFD testing enclosure and configured it for a 4x4 space. 
The machine moves the Apogee SQ500 quantum sensor around the space at 2 inch increments and takes 529 measurements per hang height. I measured the light's output at hang heights of 6 inches up to 36 inches at 2 inch increments with a cool down and warm up period between each measurement sequence. My kilowatt meter measured 500 watts of power draw when I first turned on the light, but it settled down to 493 watts when the light was completely warmed up. I'll go through the results now, and these graphs might end up being a bit difficult to view on mobile, so I'll do my best to describe them, but if you want a closer look, you can view the high-res images for each chart on my website, ppfdcharts.com, which I'll link in the description. This image shows the direction I had the light oriented in for the test, and the little black connectors at the top of the frame shows the side that the power comes in to feed the strips. You'll notice that the PPFD numbers typically trend higher on the top side of the charts because of this. The diodes closest to the power source get more power than the ones at the very end of the strips, so the light output is higher on that side. All measurements were taken with the light on full power, but you can estimate what the results would be at other power levels just by doing the math. For example, if the center read 800 at full power, you could extrapolate that at 50% power, it'd likely read a little over 400. For flowering, Viper Spectra recommends a hanging height of 16 inches at full power, and my results confirm that this does appear to be the optimal height in terms of coverage and intensity. At 16 inches, the highest recorded reading was 886, and the lowest was in one of the corners at 548. The average of the entire space was 765. 74.5% of the 4x4 space measured over 700 micromoles per meter squared per second, with 62% coverage uniformity. Coverage uniformity refers to how evenly the light is distributed across the space. 100% uniformity would mean that the minimum measurement and the maximum measurement were the same. In my opinion, 500 watts in a 4x4 is a great balance between cost and performance. Averaging PPFD a little over 750 is right in the sweet spot for the vast majority of growers who aren't supplementing with CO2. To hit those 1000 plus PPFD numbers with decent uniformity, you'd likely need another 100 watts or so, and why bother paying more for a bigger driver if you're probably going to end up dimming it down to the 7 or 800 range anyway. As we go down through the results towards the 6 inch hang height, the max readings do go up and break 1000, but uniformity definitely takes a hit, and you end up with a pretty big hotspot beneath the frame of the light while the corners continue to drop off. If we go back the other way and start raising the light, obviously we lose our intensity but gain uniformity. At 24 inches, it's up to about 78% for uniformity and the lowest PPFD reading breaks the 600 mark in one of the corners while the max reading comes down to 775. Viper Spectra recommends a hang height of 30 inches at 50% power for seedlings and 28 inches at 75% power for veg, both with an 18.6 light schedule. I'm going to quickly run through all the results now. If you want to skip through this, then just jump ahead about a minute. This light's definitely going to be a contender for the best new 4x4 light of the year. Here's what I like about it. It's got a very large footprint which helps to cover the outside edges of your grow space, but it's foldable and very light which makes it easy to move around if you need to. It's well built and I like that they've made it easy to remote mount the driver. The KS5000 uses LM301H diodes rather than the LM301Bs that many of its competitors use. Better efficiency means you get more photons for the same amount of power. The documentation for this light is really well done. The manual has instructions for assembly, suggestions for PPFD requirements for different types of plants at different stages, it's got PPFD charts in the manual, and it's just well written and nicely organized. I know some people have trouble with light companies that sell primarily on Amazon, but my experience with the Viper Spectra team has been completely positive. They're responsive and friendly and haven't really put me off like some other companies have in the past. 
That'll do it for this one. If you're looking for a new 4x4 light, I think the KS5000 is a smart buy. You're getting a lot of bang for your buck with this thing, and I think the PPFD results speak for themselves. If you're buying on Amazon, you can get an even better price and help to support this channel at the same time by using my discount code, which is GARDENERKS. And this discount code will work on all three of the KS series lights. I really appreciate everybody that uses my code and helps me to continue publishing videos on lights and garden automation. This light is brand, brand new, and it hasn't even launched on Amazon yet, but it is slated to come into stock at the beginning of March here, and it will definitely be worth waiting for. If you do end up buying one, let me know what you think of it, and I'm going to be running this myself in my 4x4 as well. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you on the next one.